Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. I want to quickly talk about four survival crops. Not because we're going to run out of food, but because they store well. And that's typically what a survival crop is. Your crops that, that are going to store well that you can use when the garden's not growing, usually in the fall and the winter. So, main categories. The first one really are potatoes. These are potatoes that I'm growing in 100 gallon root pouches. I saw these at my seed shop. I'll be doing a harvest video on them, but I did look in there, found one sitting on the top, and if you, you know, just stick your hand in here now because these are ready to go, see what I find on the surface, you can find your potatoes. They store pretty well. Different varieties will store longer, but you can dice these up and you can freeze them. Here are the five groups we're going to cover. Root crops, potatoes, winter squash, drying beans on the vine, and they're not ready yet. They won't be ready until October, but sweet potatoes. You can grow them in root pouches like that or fabric pots. I have a bunch in the ground here that have now died back. Weeds are coming in. They're all going to be harvested. And let's just see what's in here. Hopefully we find some. These are red potatoes and purple potatoes in there. Potatoes are great storage crops. Different varieties, you'll be able to store longer. Now, you can grow pumpkins. They store pretty well. But the next category, I think, are winter squash. These are squash that will store for months in a root cellar or even in your home. So you can grow a lot of them. Let's take a look. I'm growing butternut squash and acorn squash. So those are the winter squash that I recommend. Now, potatoes can mature in 70 days, 100 days. You can start them in the spring, the summer, the fall, depending on what zone you're in. Your winter squash sometimes needs a good 80 to 110 days to produce. But we're gonna take a look at the butternut squash. There's one right there. I know that there's 16 on the plants over there. There are some acorn squash in here. Let's see if I can find them. There's a butternut. The vines have crossed over. And I know there's an acorn squash down there. I p picked a couple of them. Come, let's come around here to the other side. I just want to show you how prolific your winter squash can be. And it's going to give you a lot of time or a lot of vegetables to store. And that will f help feed you through the months when your garden's not producing. Butternut, butternut, butternut. Another one down there, another one down there one hiding over there. So winter squash, 80 to 110 days, sometimes a little bit longer depending on the variety, will give you a great crop, a bunch of them growing over there on top of my compost pile. Will give you a great harvest of vegetables that can really store for months. Another great storage crop are sweet potatoes. Now. I'm in Maryland Zone 7. You want to get your sweet potatoes in when it starts to warm. These, goes, these go in in May, and these will continue to grow in here until really October when the frost comes. So I don't have any I can pull out yet because it's the middle of August, so they're still developing. These are growing in a metal bed, uh, probably 16 inches tall on the side. Lots of soil in there. I put in 12 to 14 to 16 plants, I don't recall. But this is going to give me a ton of sweet potatoes that store really well and I'll be able to, you know, eat them, freeze them, store them in a root cellar over really November, December, January when I can't be out here gardening. I just wanted to show you the trellising. I like to trellis the sweet potatoes upward, helps manage the vines, but the more vine growth you have, the more sunlight that's getting in there, the more you water them the more sweet potatoes you're going to get. They're a great crop for storing and they're packed full of nutrition and they're absolutely delicious. The next group are beans. Now, you can harvest beans through the summer. You eat them when they're smaller, they're tender. These are yard long beans. These are bush beans and they're in the process of drying out. These aren't dry yet, but what you can do is let all kinds of different beans, including green beans, just dry and mature on the vine. So when these are completely dry, you'll be able to pop out tons of beans and you can store, let's get this in camera, you can store tons of dried beans. Now green beans, yard long beans, might not have the most punch 
for vitamins. Let's see if I can open this as I'm talking. I can't. It's pretty tough. There you go. May not have the most punch in way of protein and vitamins, but you can get all you can grow all kinds of different bean varieties that are, you know, better for drying and storing, and then you can use them over the winter months too. They make wonderful soups. And then finally, let's walk down here. You have some of your root crops. So I have beets in here. These are blood beets, and you can see how nicely they have formed. They will store for a while. Those are another variety of beets back there. And then I have a couple in here. Now these have been growing through the summer. I'm harvesting them for the leaves. But beets grow really quickly. You could also throw turnips in there. But there are specific root crops, just like these, that store well, packed full of nutrition, and you can store them in a root cellar. You can also, again, don't be afraid to dice up and freeze some of these if you need them to be uh, stored for a longer period of time. So the five survival crops, I threw in a bonus one, are potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, winter squash, and some of your root crops. And they will do really well storing and feeding you over the months when you can't, you know, typically grow in a garden because it's too cold. There's either frost or there's freezes and it's just not gonna work. You, you can, can also can, ferment, and pickle your warm weather crops that don't store well like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, even eggplant. And when you're thinking of survival crops, you're just really thinking of the crops that are going to store well so that you can get to them come, you know, dead of winter when you're hungering for the garden. You can't do much out there, but you can make a great pot of soup or something like that. Thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.